Hello Knitting Addicts, welcome to my living room and this 11th episode of my creative podcast. I'm Selma and today we will talk mostly about knitting, a bit about sewing and a bit about cross-stitching as well, which is very unusual. I hope you're well. Um, today is the 1st of December, winter is coming. Yesterday it snowed in Paris, which was quite fun actually and uh, unusual as well but uh, we're not there to talk about the weather <laughs> so let's start with finished objects I have no finished knitted object to be honest because I'm on to well I'm currently working on two pretty big projects so um, they're not going to be ready anytime soon well <laughs> It happens, but, well, progress is slow. I do have, however, one finished sewn object. Sewn object? Yeah, whatever. It's a small pouch. I bought the kit to make it um, during the festival I told you about last time. It's a Japanese fabric with fireflies, which I found really, really nice. I think it's linen. All the pieces for the kit were pre-cut, so that was that not to do. Um, I think the longest part of it was actually the ironing, well, taking out the ironing board and the iron and ironing the, the interfacing. <laughs> yeah, I even managed to sew the zip, which I'm going to break since I keep opening it and closing it. Uh, yeah, I managed to attach the zip without any issue, which is, well, a big deal for me. Next um, step will be invisible zippers. Ah, well, one thing at a time. We're not there yet. Um, I wouldn't recommend this kit to total beginners because the steps were not very clear sometimes. Well, at, at a time I had to, well, really read stuff and process stuff to make sure that I was doing things right but in a whole it's still nice I well nothing lives in it yet but I will find a use for it soon or I will or maybe I'll, maybe I could offer it for Christmas I don't know we will see that um Concerning the works in progress, well, I will start with the cross-stitching because it will be fast. I've started working on a bookmark, which I bought at Liberty in London, like, maybe seven years ago. Um, yeah, it has, like, landmarks of, well, streets of London things. It's actually not that, it's really not complicated. It's just, you just need to pay attention to what you're doing. I decided to start it during the last match of the Knitage Tournament, which we, Ravenclaw, lost, but, well, you need someone for the last place, so <laughs> shit happens, it's not that bad. It was good fun. So I finished five colors already, and I'm well on to the red. Yeah, it's easy, I like it, there's, a, there's felt for the back. Which isn't which was included in the kit, so so you can actually use it as a bookmark afterwards and not have that ugly well, ugly see my ugly back side visible. So yeah, it's um oh, I've been savagely attacked by the corner of the table. Uh, <laughs> What was I saying? Yeah, I used to do cross stitching quite a lot actually, and um, I've sort of fallen out of love for it. But this project actually has um, has put me back on track, so maybe I will do more cross stitching in the future. I don't. Um, knitting works in progress are the pavement sweater still. Well. I have the color, the upper part done, and I'm onto the body of the of the thing. I have 10 centimeters done already. Only 30 left, I think, maybe 40. I don't know. I think it's I think it's 
40 in a hole, so yeah. Well, at the moment, it's the perfect project for knit night because you can just take it and knit, 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 and not think about what you're actually doing. You can still keep talking, you know? I find it just right for that kind of mindless knitting, you know? Um, the next project cannot really be done mindlessly like that. It's the Dummy Fay Hap by Kate Davis. Um, it's um, it's a big scarf actually. Well, it looks more like a scarf like than like a like a shawl. It's a bit well. It will be better once I block it. Starts like that with a pointed tip, and then it widens, and then goes straight until the end. Like the end is straight as well. You know, it's not. There is not another tip on the other side. The pattern goes on 64 rows, so pattern, stockinette, pattern, and then more stockinette. Um, it's quite easy to follow, but the explanations are not the clearest, to be honest. Uh, like at some point she says, repeat rows 3 and 4 of her the 6 times. Yeah, except that it's not the rows themselves that you have to do, it's just the edging. Which is a bit confusing and at first I started with a stitch pattern which was completely off so I had to rip it off and restart but then you know well you learn from your mistakes so yeah it just keeps getting better <laughs> but anyway yeah I bought the I bought the yarn it's JC Rennie and Company from well I bought it in, in Edinburgh last year. It's Chunky Aaron, a hundred person wool, the shade white 100. It's just basic white, off white. I really, really like it. It's uh, it's soft, but then it's still wooly, you know. It's it's completely different from this one, for example. It's um I don't think it's going to be unpleasant to wear, you know, like like some really rustic wool can be sometimes when it's scratchy. This one is actually very soft. It would make up all over it, but no matter. <laughs> I will wear it around my face anyway, around my neck and lower, uh, lower cheeks anyway, so. Yeah, it's really, really nice. It's a nice... Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. I went to the swimming pool this morning and I'm just... <sighs> the only thing I wanted to do when I came home after work was napping. But then I decided, no, you said you would film your podcast today. So here I am. And maybe I will nap afterwards. We will see that. Um, I was saying, it's a really nice knit. It's. Um, I'm looking forward to actually finishing it and being able to wear it. But since I was on these two big projects i started a small one to uh, kind of break the routine you know it's a hat it's the airstream hat pattern by sarah sandermeyer yeah it calls for dk uh yarn but i'm actually making it with i think it's it's fingering it's merino superwash from la fefile i think it is fingering weight but it's not very thin either so i guess if I, when i block it, it will be fine i uh, bought the pattern during the gift along on rivalry i will tell you a bit more later about that but yeah i like it the pattern is nothing overly complicated it's just uh, knit knit two together slip slip knit slip slip knits and yarn overs so Nothing extraordinary. I'm looking forward to finishing it. I think I might be able to finish it before the end of the weekend. I want to, um, I hope that it would be finished by today, but obviously with work, I have had other stuff to do. So it's not finished, but I'm almost halfway now. So why not until Sunday? Fingers crossed. Uh, that's it for my works in progress. 
Um, I have quite a few planned projects already. I have the puzzle wood mittens, which I showed you last time because this week was so cold and I froze my fingers off on the bike in the morning to go to work. So I thought, okay, I really, really need to knit mittens. Um, so that would be the first thing I do. I start after the, after the hat. I also have a plan to start. Yeah. I've planned to start the Good Vibes show from Nadia Cretan Les Chênes because a friend of mine gifted me the pattern this week and um, and I bought the yarn in Edinburgh so I will be able to start it soon. I'm looking forward to that. And I also have two sets of uh, hat and mitts or mittens planned to work with yarn which I just ordered. From Rain Cloud and Sage, it's a small German company that just started off. Um, they, it's their first production. I ordered four skeins from them. It's local German yarn. I ordered four skeins of cream color and two skeins of gray. It's the natural sheep color, I think. Yeah, it's not. It's not uh, dyed yarn. Yeah, I'm looking forward to actually. Uh, being able to touch it, you know, squeeze it and everything. Uh, I also ordered so many patterns uh, during the, the Ravelry gift along thing. It's once a year in the last week of November, a lot of designers actually offer discounts on a selection of their patterns. And to be honest, I didn't need <laughs> to buy so many, but well, I'm weak when I see it, when I see a discount and it's something which I like, you know, and it's, well, it makes it really cheap. I thought, why not? You know, and you support small businesses as well. So, right. Tell me you're like me. <laughs> um, yeah, I could probably knit for 10 years without any problem with all the patterns, which I already own, but. Ah, oh, well, there are worse hobbies <laughs> than collecting patterns. The last thing I have is the 5 Muse Alchemy Kit, the giver edition, which I received this week. Where's the... The leaflet is, was gone. It was hiding. Oh gosh, what a mess. So it's the giver edition. It's the third which I receive and as always I find it really really nice. So the leaflet has um, explanations about the theme of the box and um, codes for well to download the patterns which are included in the box. So that's two hats and one cow and um, and the code to download the Faber Muse quarterly giver edition it's a it's a magazine it's i think it's 130 pages or something it's actually pretty big also has patterns in it and um yeah like the previous edition so i'm looking forward to reading this one it also explains about the yarn and the rest of the notions which are included so the yarn is actually from uh, the feel good yarn company and it's called Silver Spun. It's 87% combed cotton, 5% silver, 5% nylon, and 3% spandex. 34 grams and 200 yards, so that's pretty decent. Um, yeah, it says that uh, it's spun with silver. It says that it inhibits the growth of other causing bacteria has excellent thermal properties, is non-toxic and perfect for those suffering from diabetes, arthritis and sensitive skin. And it's also conductive, so you can actually use your smartphone if you're wearing gloves or mittens. Knit with this. That's pretty cool. It's pretty um, luxurious yarn, right? Hmm. Along with the yarn, you had a series of postcards so, with color work, sweaters, and one cardigan. Now I find them really nice. Uh, they are from uh, Rowan Morrison books. 
they also provided us with a small notepad um, with some knitting stuff on top. Yeah, it's nice. And the logo is a small rabbit. Oh, cute. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> there was a small sample of soak. It's the celebration smell. It says good, clean, fun, which doesn't tell me much about uh, what it actually smells, but anyway. And the last thing included, oh no, it's not the last thing, sorry. It's just that the other is on the other side because I've just recorded the French podcast before and obviously I left things around already. Anyway, so there was this pouch, which is really cool. Mostly, well, mostly also because it has a very wide bottom. So it's, I guess when you put stuff in it, it will stay up, you know. It has a small pocket inside. There. It's from Woodsy and Wild, handmade bags for your everyday life. It's really nice, the fabric. I really find it lovely. Hmm. Oh crap, that's... That paper, you know, from the packaging, it just sticks to everything. Anyway, the last part of the package was this candle. It's called Trifecta from the Shota. Mm. Chamomile, vanilla and rose. And it's a uh, soy candle. So it's pretty big, actually. I don't know how long, how long it actually burns, you know. But... It's pretty cool. No, I really like it. It smells really nice. So as soon as I'm done with my Christmas candles, I will <laughs> I will light this one. And we will see how it smells. We'll smell it. Anyway. Well, that was it for today, actually. It was a pretty uh, short episode, I think. Um, I really, really need to do some sorting in my stash and everything. It's just, I, I'm, I'm looking at the Fiber Muse Alchemy Kit, you know, and as much as I love it, and I th I'm pretty sure I will keep being subscribed, well, being a, having a subscription to it, um, it just keeps adding stuff to my stash and to my equipment and to my everything. I, I have no idea how many... Um, how many project bag bags I even have at the moment. Um, yeah, I should try to find a way to actually like bring everything together and sort through everything. Like, and I should also update my stash on Ravelry just, um, yeah, just at least to have a precise idea of where I stand yarn wise, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's a hard life. No, I'm not, yet at the point of hiding stuff because i'm ashamed of what i buy you know um, my husband doesn't judge on <laughs> on my yarn purchases purchases nor should he um but yeah i'm starting to run out of space actually so yeah i need to uh, to just like take half a day and uh, roll with it you know start on it one day, when I'm brave enough. Well, there you go. Um, we're done for the day. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if so, please leave comments, uh, um, subscribe, share, leave a thumbs up. Um, <laughs> no, it will be it will be nice and encouraging. And if you have any constructive criticism please also share it. Um, yeah, I hope I will see you very soon. Well, sooner on social networks. And I think my next episode will be short before I leave for a vacation. So I will be winterish. And then when I come back, I will be winterish, but slightly tanned, hopefully. Anyway, we're not there yet. Um, yeah, see you very, very soon. And um, in the meantime, enjoy your knitting. Bye.